Hello. For the accounting one class uh, on chapter seven, you learn internal control and cash. Uh, when you complete this chapter, you'll be able to define internal control, its components and principles with related procedures. You'll describe the impact of fraud on financial statements, apply internal control over cash receipts and payments, describe the bank account as a control device, understand the way of reporting cash and using cash ratio. Therefore, on the chapter, you'll see the internal control title, fraud title, internal control over cash receipts and payments, the bank account as a control device, reporting cash and using cash ratio titles. Okay, you know, in the uh, business entities, Management are responsible to manage the company and to control the company's activities. Therefore, uh, management's responsibility to control the company's activities is related to internal control. So internal control is a process effected by an entity's board of directors, management and other personnel designed to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of objectives relating to operations, reporting and compliance. So the objectives of internal control are to provide reasonable assurance that assets are safeguarded and used for business purposes. Business information is accurate and employees comply with law and regulations. Okay. It is very important. Uh, manage, management of the company is responsible safeguarding the uh, company's asset. And all the assets will be used according to the uh, plans and business purposes. And produced information must be accurate. So a recording process, accounting information system must be accurate. And also... Uh, companies, employee, workers, uh, they must uh, comply with all the law and uh, regulations uh, to provide the reasonable assurance about those subjects are responsibility of the management. So they must establish the internal control system in the company. So all... COSO framework is helpful for this internal control system. Uh, the Committee of Sponsoring Organization framework. This internal control framework has a particular importance and benefit for the board of directors or management of the company. So this uh, internal control framework has five components. Control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, monitoring activities. And uh, even there is a very good internal control system, there can be still some uh, frauds, mistakes or errors. And uh, fraud, when we say fraud, fraud is an intentional misrepresentation of facts made for purpose of persuading another party to act in a way that causes injury or damage to that party. But error is an unintentional misrepresentation of some items. The difference between term error and fraud is based on intention. Of course, the uh, internal control system is trying to eliminate all the errors and frauds. Uh, so uh, establishing the internal control system, control environment, uh, accounting information system or documentation, a lot of uh, things can be uh, made by the companies management and uh, at the top board of directors. There can be two types of fraud or we can classify basically under two titles uh, according to the 
uh, their impacts on the financial statements. Misappropriation of assets, fraudulent financial reporting. Okay, in accounting uh, book, actually, uh, we are not going very details of the con internal control, but to explain the importance of accounting information system or recording or documentation, we are uh, looking at this type of event because you know uh, if uh, employee uh, of the company uh, is using the company's asset for their own uh, interest, company business entity will lose. Or sometimes uh, if they cannot safeguard the assets, some of the assets can be broken or stolen. Therefore, uh, to explain the importance of this documentation and establishing the system, we are giving some uh, a little bit information about the internal control. And for the uh, fraud uh, triangle, triangle, the description of the factors that may cause fraud uh, risk uh, is related to this fraud triangle. And three main uh, part or uh, events or uh, major parts are important. Components of fraud triangle are pressure, opportunity and rationalization. So when you establish the internal control system, you have to uh, be very careful. You will not give any opportunity. Uh, and you know, if someone uh, decide about to make some bad things uh, in the company, they can make rationalization. And uh, if they have some opportunities, they can go further. And uh, there can be some pressure. Don't force uh, your employee a lot or you don't, uh, I mean, you have level of pressure is very important. If there is very low pressure, they will not uh, make anything. If there is a very high pressure, uh, they can make some different things. When you uh, establish the standards or uh, for the other things, you have to be careful. And cash is very uh, liquid asset in the companies. And uh, it is very uh, easy uh, to use the cash for uh, different purposes. It can be stolen very easily. Uh, therefore, internal control uh, is related to cash is important. For the cash receipts, uh, when the company makes sales, uh, it, it will be cash inflows to the company. So to follow the uh, amounts of cash, uh, we will use different documentation. Each source of cash has unique security measure. For example, point of sale terminal terminal can provide effective control in transaction with cash receipt over the counter. Okay. Or you can use a uh, different type of uh, devices. Uh, business should consider to design more complex and formal control procedures. There are some ways to improve the effectiveness of controls over the counter, such as using an improved software giving responsible to responsibilities to the different employees uh, will be uh, important or necessary steps. We have to control cash receipts. Uh, we have to have some system. Again, for the uh, cash payments, there must, there must be some internal control uh, procedures. Uh, when while making some payments, most important principle is, again, separation of duties. Good separation of duties between operations of the business and writing checks for cash payments should exist. And uh, also some companies use technology 
to make secure payments. Instead of writing check, uh, they can use electronic phone transferring uh, system or similar systems. And uh, you can use the bank accounts instead of keeping the money uh, in the company, just uh, for the small expenditure, uh, keep very few amount of money in the petty cash fund and uh, other amounts, other cash uh, can be deposited to the bank accounts. It will be very important for the internal control purposes. So bank accounts uh, are very helpful tools as a control device. A bank will uh, safeguard the company's money uh, and also uh, to make deposit or to take money from the bank, uh, you can use uh, signature cards, deposit tickets, checks and uh, electronic funds transfer. And also, a uh, bank will follow uh, their records and you will follow your records. But the other side of the event is bank. So uh, you can check the uh, correct, uh, correctness or uh, similarities or differences. So bank reconciliation is important for the internal control purposes. The bank reconciliation compares and explains the difference between cash on the company's books and cash according to the bank's records on a specific date. So you can uh, try uh, to find the reason why there are differences, if there are some differences. <clears throat> and company's cash amount, uh, you know, cash is an asset. So cash will be reported on the balance sheet, but not only uh, banknotes or coins, cash and cash equivalents will be reported as a first line, as a more most liquid asset uh, on the balance sheet. So we will not report just only cash, we'll report as a cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents uh, can be defined as highly liquid investment that can be converted into cash in a short term. Okay, they are most liquid asset of the company. So again, by using this uh, amount, we can calculate uh, one ratio. It's named cash ratio. Uh, this ratio measures company's ability to pay its current liabilities from cash and cash equivalents. To calculate this ratio, cash and cash equivalents will be divided by total current liabilities. Um, cash and cash equivalents amount on hand will uh, be used to pay companies short term liabilities. How many times we can pay existing short term liabilities by the company's cash and cash equivalents amount. So it is very helpful uh, ratio uh, to talk about the companies liquidity and companies short term debt paying ability. Okay, next uh, and last chapter is related to receivables.